Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to uh, call to order the special meeting of council, uh, virtual meeting by Zoom, this Wednesday, September 22nd at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, is there any declaration of pecuniary interests? Being none. Next item is uh, resolution. So moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Brenda Blimke, be it hereby resolved that the special meeting of council of the town of Laurentian Hills do now move to hold a public meeting pursuant to section 34 of the Planning Act, RSO 1990 as amended to consider an application to amendment of the, to the town's comprehensive zoning at 10.01 a.m. Any, any favor or concerns? All in favor? I knew I'd get it right. Carried. Okay. <clears throat> so welcome everybody who's in attendance. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the purpose of today's meeting is to hear an application for an amendment to the town's comprehensive zoning bylaw 10-12. The town's planning coordinator will provide an overview of the details of the application. We will then hear from any person or public body in opposition and then in favor to the application that will be heard. The application and or its representative will be given an opportunity to speak to the application if they choose. If a person or public body does not make an oral or written submission, in support or in opposition to the proposed zoning amendment or make a written submission to the town before the bylaw is passed, that person or public body may not be added to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal. The decision of council may be appealed to the tribunal by the applicant or another member of the public. If you wish to be notified of the decision of council in respect to the application, you must submit a written request to the clerk. This will also entitle you to be advised of a possible appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal hearing. The clerk must provide notice of council's decision to all those who requested a copy within 15 days after the day of the bylaw is passed. An appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal may be fi filed with the clerk of the town not later than 20 days after the day that the notice of decision was given. The notice of appeal must set out the objection to the bylaw and the reasons in support of the objection accompanied by the required fee. I will ask our clerk to uh, take over from here, please. Thank you, Your Worship. One of the purposes of the Planning Act is to provide for a planning process that is open, accessible, timely, and efficient. According to all written submissions, documents, correspondence, emails, or any other communications that we have received, including, including names and addresses, will form part of the public record and will be disclosed, made available to the, as the municipality and such person sees fit, including anyone requesting such information. Accordingly, in providing such information, you shall be deemed to have consented to its use and disclosure as part of the planning process. Thank you very much. Um, I'll now uh, call forward the planning coordinator, Gord Rollins, for an overview of the application. Gord, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, firstly, I'd like to advise Council that as required under the provisions of uh, Section 34 of the Planning Act, Notifi notification of the application to amend the town zoning bylaw and schedule public meeting was circulated to the adjacent property owners within 120 meters of the property in question, as well as the appropriate agencies, and the property was also posted on August 25, 2021. There have been no written submissions received either in favor or against this application. Thank you, Gord. Okay. Uh, the applicant is presently on Zoom uh, today. Do you wish to speak to your application? Uh, no, I've got nothing to actually uh, state. Okay, thank you. So the public meeting uh, is to hear any concerns about the application. Uh, 
you'll be given five minutes to speak. Uh, please state your name and address to your concerns. Um, there'll be no rebuttal to comments made by others. Uh, is there anyone present who wishes to speak in favor of the application? No. Seeing none. If there are no submissions or presentations or after everyone has spoken, then we will need to go back to the resolutions to adjourn the public meeting and reconvene the special meeting of council. Uh, then go to resolution to adjourn the special meeting of council. So everything is good to go then. Okay. So, uh, so we'll adjournment of the meeting. Uh, moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Brenda Blinky. Be hereby resolved that this public meeting for a rezoning application to now adjourn at 10.07 a.m. And the special meeting of council reconvened. All in favor and carried. Be hereby resolved that this special meeting of the Council of the Town of Laurentian Hills does now adjourn at 10.07 a.m. All in favor? And carried. And closed. Morning, everybody. I'd like to call the Committee of Whole for Protection to Person and Property to order. Uh, any declaration or pecuniary interest? Seeing none. Delegations and presentations, I haven't seen any. Uh, Fire Department. So if you start at A, we'll look at Kevin's monthly report. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Very good, Kevin. So you had a couple of meetings. You've already had a couple of meetings in July and August. Yes, we're back to uh, normal meetings and training. Uh, all of our training uh, basically is outside. It's a good time of year for it. Perfect. Uh, Mayor Remo? Yeah, the, uh, Chief White, uh, I see you had a pretty busy summer uh, with the you know, the accidents and the uh, fires and so on this this summer so uh and uh i've heard nothing but kudos about uh 
about the Laurentian Hills Fire Department. So I, I just want to personally thank you and, and your volunteer fire department for the you know the amazing support that you know you provide the town of Laurentian Hills. Uh, you, you know your team is well trained and and uh, make us real make up makes me feel much safer anyways in this community. So thank you again for for you and, uh, and your volunteers. Thank you. Anyone else? I think that comes from all of Council Kevin. We all appreciate what you do. Yeah, excellent. Excellent work. Okay, correspondence. We have a letter from the head chair Mariah Township about our auto X. So this for me was I was on when we uh, did the talks. Yeah. And if they haven't got any new information, I say we just wait till they come up with something mm -hmm. from my point of view. What does anybody else think? Go ahead, Brenda. Brenda? I agree, Bruce. I think uh, at the time uh, when you were on that committee and, you know, looking into it and going through the different talks, I think we all came to a conclusion of what had to be done. And I think we need to uh, support the fire department on this as well. Mayor Raymo? Oh, thank you. <clears throat> and I, and I, I hate to go back all the time, but we obviously we have gone back. And uh, I know at that particular time, there was an accident that did take place up at Head Claire Mariah uh, after the agreement was dissolved. And uh, on that particular day, as it turned out, I don't think there was, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think auto extrication was required, but it was called on. And that really puts our, our, our town of Laurentian Hills in, in jeopardy. And I think at that particular, on that particular day, we, we only had a few uh, volunteer firefighters available to, to work, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Kevin, is that, is that correct? Yes, I believe we only had uh, five guys that were available that day. So it, being a volunteer department, it's, it's very hard to guarantee you're going to have lots of guys in the daytime everyone's at work so you, you basically have your retired guys and your shift uh, people so it makes it hard so on that particular on that particular day how many would have people would have been required to go up if we had uh, done so and on what sort of equipment would we need well to, with the way we have it set up, it would have taken about it would have taken five people to go up. And that would have taken our, our pumper, one of our equipment vans, and our pickup to go up there, and that would have left this the municipality bare almost. We'd have had a pumper left in Chalk River and the equipment van with no staff, uh, and you're looking at uh, a lot of money rolling up the highway for a false possible false alarm, especially in the winter time if we have an accident. Uh, we're down a truck and you can see from other correspondence that I've added how long it takes to get a repair on a truck. How long would it take to get a replacement of a truck? Uh, our truck that we had on order from last year, I was notified yesterday is going to be at least four to five months late if they get everything they need because things are so hard to get right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions on that one? Dan? Or oh, sorry. Deputy Mayor. Oh, um, so my only comment is right now they're only Hitler and Raya is just asking to have a conversation, and I certainly do support Kevin and 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 his department. They do excellent work, and I understand that it would leave um, our residents uh, vulnerable. But there may be another option, or there may be some suggestions that we may be able to come with up with for Hitler and Raya. I think it's worth having the conversation with them and with whoever else will be responding to this we're not committing to anything i think we should just listen to what they have to say that's it uh, for me Councilor Hall? i agree with uh deputy mayor um i think it's something that we uh, should definitely pursue talking it doesn't cost anything to talk and see what uh, what they come up with maybe maybe they have other plans or whatever or whatever and there's other municipalities around that might be willing to do some talking as well. I, I think we should, they're just talks. I think we should definitely sit down and talk with them. Mayor Remo? Sorry, Mayor. I'm okay with that, but not, I certainly don't want to do it at the expense of our own, our own taxpayers. 
And we've had a lot of accidents this summer on Highway 17 uh, within our own municipality. And uh, I, as I said, I'm okay with con uh, continuing on with, with, the, with some talks, but I certainly want to make sure that our community is, is uh, safe with our, our fire department who do an excellent job for us. Councillor Blimke? I would support that as well. I mean, uh, it can't hurt to have the talks, but uh, again, you know, what we've discussed, you know, our safety of our residents, our fire department is first and foremost, but it certainly can't hurt to have some talks. There might be some ideas that come up or something. So definitely, you know, we want to be good neighbors and continue to do some talks with them. So I'd support that. Okay, so what I get out of this, we want to have carry us on with some talks. So next, we would have to see who is going to the talks. Kevin, for sure. I'd be willing to talk to them. I can't see how we can supply them anything, but maybe we can give them some ideas. It, it doesn't hurt, like, like our Deputy Mayor yep. said, to talk. Yeah, I agree. Okay. So Kevin and... You're That's sure. mine. Yeah. Okay. I would say you, Bruce. Okay, we'll try to set something up. I'll get sure to see if we can find the time. Thank you. On to... Uh, well, that's it for you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Oh, no. no we're not done. One more. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Another correspondence about fire truck ownership flavored, <laughs> favored over rental. Could you uh, give us some insight on this, Kevin? Yes, I get uh, correspondence the same as uh, most other chiefs in the province do that are in the Ontario Association of Fire Chiefs. And that was one item that came across my desk. And uh, I thought it would be good to share with council, especially with this head Claren Mariah item on online, but not just for that, just so you have an idea of how long things take to get done. Uh, Elliot Lake has a, a truck and they have a chip that's gone in it and it's going to take them 19 months to get that chip uh, from the factory to put in their truck and they're going to have to uh, rent a truck at $400 a day and I think they decided to, to purchase the truck, but uh, at the end of the 19 months, you don't know for sure you're going to have that chip. So it's just like our truck we've ordered, like uh, right now in this day and age, things are taking a long time to come from, from manufacturers because a lot of the places aren't as far ahead with COVID as we are here in, uh, in North America. And not much of our stuff's manufactured in North America. So it was just an information uh, item for you anyway, so you'd have an idea, because I believe our truck will be quite late. Just That's just my feeling. Any questions, so Mary Mo? Uh, thank you for the update there, Kevin. Uh, do we have similar situations with some of the current uh, equipment that we have right now? Sorry. Do we have a similar situation, like with the current with the equipment that we have now? Like, if a co computer chip failed, would we be in the same boat as what uh, with, as they would be in? Yes, it's quite possible. Like we have a, a newer, uh, our international is fairly new. It's a, uh, a 17, 2017, or two uh, equipment vans, or 2019s. So it's quite possible the same thing could happen to us. Uh, that's why it, it's good to have good relationships with your manufacturers and that in the area. Uh, so something could be uh, arranged if, if you run into problems. And then uh, you just try and plan ahead for that as far as you can. Like if our equipment van goes down, you might remember a few years ago, we bought a, uh, a closed in trailer when our older equipment was, uh, was failing on a regular basis. Well, we still have that trailer, we still have it. So if an equipment van went down, we could use that trailer with the pickup. It's awful inconvenient, but it's, it's workable. So, and with the trucks, like when we uh, get this new pumper, it might be wise to uh, keep our old pumper uh, and just keep it in service. Don't use it, but just keep it in service till uh, everything is cleared up with this, with the pandemic and chips are all, things are more uh, available. <clears throat> that's, that's a really good uh, suggestion, Kevin, you know, uh, considering, you know, what's going on right now with the shortage of these microchips to keep the old pumper you know, when we get the new one in, um, very good. Well, I think it'll only cost around two or three thousand dollars a year for your safeties and all yeah. your inspections, and that well, it doesn't take long to eat up two thousand mm -hmm. dollars or three thousand dollars at yeah. four hundred dollars a day. Yeah. Great forward thinking, Mary Uh 
These computer chips, is it usually like the same one that goes or is it a different chips? Do you know offhand or? Nowadays. The reason, I, the reason I'm asking the question is if it's the same chip that goes you know, on, on every occasion, should we be looking at a spare chip just to set it off to the side? I don't know. I really don't know. No, and we haven't had any problems with chips, but I've heard other uh, uh, people in the area that have log trucks and things like that. And the newer trucks are really bad for going down. And it's always, a, it seems like a chip or a, yeah. some computer part or something like that. So there's no reason or rhyme. Just well, we pretty well have to wait until it happens. And if it's a recurring thing, try and get them. The only thing is like that one chip in Elliott Lake, 19 months. Well, yeah. how are you going to get two? You can't even get one, yeah. you know, and it's not just vehicles. It's chips with everything nowadays yeah. is, is the problem. Yeah. Computers. Yeah. There's a, there's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So any other questions on that? Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Waito. Have a good day. Thanks, Kevin. So now I'll move on to billing department. You have the billing uh, inspector's report for months of July and August. Any questions? Besides, he's busy. Okay, seeing none. I'll move on to the billing inspector's mileage report for July and August. Questions? None? Oh, and Gord, by the way, thank you for your service. I hear you're leaving us next month sometime. So it's been really appreciated, and I know the township people are really going to miss you. No, thank you. Yeah, you're they most like welcome. You. Thank you. Hey, emergency preparedness, imagine nothing. Uh, nothing, nothing at this time. Police, I haven't heard of any meetings. There is nothing to report, although I will be sending an email off to the detachment commander in the near future. I'm getting a lot of complaints again about the uh, about the plant road. Uh, I've talked to uh, managers at uh, CNL last week, and uh, so we may have we're going to make further that discussion and, and see what we can do to try to get the keep the traffic down apparently they're doing quite well on site but as soon as they get down to the and hills uh it, it, it seems to be a race to so the traffic lights are going in towards a cnl so um, i'll keep you informed on that in the next meeting uh, i got a question maybe from mr hoyle works there do they have something inside the gate where if you're speeding you get an automatic thing i heard something about that yeah, they have it's a tiered system. Um, if they like first offense, second offense, but they're definitely it's inside now, and uh, it's all done by camera on the on the plant road now with radar. So it's definitely uh, people Working. have slowed down. But again, it's uh, it's down to sixty from all the way in. So once people are off the plant property, everybody seems to want to make up the one minute that they lost on the plant road. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Blinkey? Uh, do we have uh, that um, speed recording sign yet, or is that still, it's still on order, eh? Another thing that's kind of slow with COVID. Okay. Any other? Nothing? Other business? I have nothing. Closed session. I don't have any. Adjournment at 1024. Thank you. I'd like to call the committee of whole to order for planning. Dec declaration of pecuniary interests. There is none. Delegations, presentations. Uh, there's none. New business. We have lots of new business. Um, item A, zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, set a public meeting date. Uh, Gord? Uh, yes, this uh Zoning bylaw amendment is basically to correct an error that was uh, uh, found in the zoning bylaw that uh, an area of, of private property on Huey Lake was zoned as Crown land, so that needs to be rezoned. So it's a it's a an application to be to be initiated by the town. So we have to uh, set the meeting has to be at least twenty days after we notify, send out notification. 
So I think probably one of the earliest dates, like the if council meeting is looking at the probably the 20th of October would be the earliest we could have it. We could have it a couple of days early, but we might as well have it on the same day as our committee and council meetings. Okay. All right. That way it would it would meet the requirements of the planning act. Perfect. Um, item B. Oh, sorry, uh, Mayor Reynolds. Is everybody okay with that date? Yes. Okay. Done. All right. Item B, site plan agreement for Bob Watts. Okay. Uh, again, board. All right, this site plan agreement is for uh, Bob Watts and in combination with uh, North Star Resort, NSA is, is for short. Um, he owns the uh, Red Pine Cottage and basically the all the owners have shares in the property, but each one has a particular cottage that is theirs. They all have shares in the property. So in order to uh, create a site plan agreement, it has to be an agreement with the town, uh, Bob Watts and the North Star Association. So what he's proposing to do, he has an existing cottage that is, um, it's in the flood fringe, it's between the 114.2 meters above sea level and 115.2 two meters, which is the one in 100 year flood level. Now you are permitted to construct within the 114.2, where he's proposing to raise the cottage. It probably won't be up as high as the 115, but it'll be high enough that he can flood proof anything below that. So the uh, association has approved the site plan, and that's one of the conditions is that the association has to approve it before we can. So he, he, originally he was going to demolish a portion of the of the existing cottage the association determined that no the whole existing cottage had to stay there so he's actually going to build an addition onto the front of it now he's still maintaining that level above uh, the high water mark and he's also still more than 100 feet back from the normal high water mark or the tree line he's about 120 or 135 feet back so he meets all those requirements uh, he has submitted uh, a site plan along with it, and what he's looking at is to get approval to go ahead and, and construct it. So my recommendation would be that we go ahead and approve it, that he construct it according to the requirements of the zoning bylaw for the high water levels at 115.2 and 114.2. Yep. Yeah. Any questions about that one? Mayor Manuel? I have no issues with it. Uh, it meets all the requirements of the <coughs> of our zoning bylaws, so uh, we should move forward with it. Okay, thank you. Um, item C, site plan control agreement for Carmen McGregor and Ruth Aleph. Aleph, Aleph, I believe it is. Um, now this site, site plan is one of the long strips of property, the three that were severed years ago. Uh, there were some issues with the uh, bluff that uh, some of the trees have been cleared and that type of thing. So there's a whole zone at the top of the bluff and the bluff and down to the waterfront is, is zone DP. Now what they're planning on doing is that they have constructed a house there, uh, I believe 2017, and they, they're looking at putting on some accessory buildings. They are both originally from overseas. One's from Australia, one's from Ireland. They have uh, visitors that come over and spend quite some time with them off and on. So they would like to put in a sleep cabin. And then again, it will meet all the requirements of what our sleep cabin is permitted to be a specific size. They will stay within that. They have some other outbuildings that they wish to put up, a garage, a woodshed, a little garden, it's called a garden office, but I, it's that type of thing. But because they are zoned rural, they're required to be three meters from the property line, from the side lot lines. And they're asking for a reduction from the three meters to one meter. And that way it gives them more room. It's, it's because it's so narrow and these buildings they want to put up and the topography, they don't want to clear any more trees out and they want to stay on all the high spots. So they submitted a plan. Uh, basically they've also, uh, they're applying for a minor variance currently. And that'll be going to uh, Committee of Adjustment on October 4th. So my recommendation would be that we, we would approve it uh, to accommodate any decision of the uh, Committee of Adjustment. Okay. 
Okay. Any questions or comments? I have no problem with that. Good. All right. Oh, Mayor Ryan Wolf. Sorry, it took me a while. I was thinking. <laughs> so, is this uh, will this cause any hardship? Maybe I maybe I missed the point here. We're changing from a three meter set, uh, to the one meter to the property line. Is there any adjacent property owners that are that they have all been notified and I have had no comments back from them? Okay. So perfect. Okay, good. And uh, so that's for the minor variance anyway. Yep. But they, they have been notified verbally. I have not sent the notices out yet, but they've been notified verbally. Okay, thank you. All right, item D, site plan control agreement for Barbara Anderson. Again, this is an existing cottage on uh, Fraserview Lane along the Ottawa River. They want to uh, build an addition onto the side of the cottage with a deck and put in a boathouse. Now, uh, basically, accessory buildings are required to be 50 feet back from the, from the uh, normal high water mark. So they're going to put the boathouse 50 feet back and construct the addition onto. It's a triangular piece of property, so it's hard to say what's the front or it's the front or side lot. But either way, it still meets all the requirements. There's an EP zone for a creek that crosses Fraser View Lane in front of their property, but they're still far enough back to meet the setbacks for that. So they've just asked for a site plan agreement because it's required when they're on the Otter River and uh, it meets both our uh, official plan policies and the zoning bylaw. So my recommendation is that we approve it and uh, go ahead. Good. 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 All right. Item E, site plan control agreement for Jeff and Colleen Stewart, Garden View Lane. Okay, their existing property is in 38 Garden View Lane. Uh, it's 1.79 acre property. It's an irregular shaped property. There's an existing cottage on, on the property that they wish to uh, remove and keep part of the foundation and build a new full time dwelling on the property. So it took them a bit of work to determine where they could put it to meet the setbacks. There's an existing creek there, but they are allowed to build as long as they don't increase the encroachment on the 24 feet from the creek instead of 50 feet, but there's no way you could build anything on the property then. So our bylaw does allow for existing as long as they don't increase that encroachment or on, on the setback. So they meet that. They wish to put a, a new garage on the property. There's a small one there as well. They're going to demolish that and pretty well the cottage except for the footprint. They're only going to use a part of the footprint and then build back farther from the waterfront. And again, it meets all required setbacks with the exception of that one creek. And I believe it's more a seasonal creek. It's not a, a full time heavy flowing creek. So again, my recommendation is that they, you know, we approve it so I can issue a building permit for it. Any questions or concerns? Mm -hmm. Mayor Ryan will. So they're going to, they're going to use the existing uh, footprint part, part of it or part of it and they're going to build on that and then they're going to add to the behind back. that yes. at, a, at, at a later date or at around the same time it no that no they'll, they'll they'll demolish the entire college except for the except for the portion of the foundation they're okay. building on and then build back from there and then build back okay i'm, I'm clear now thanks <laughs> All right, item F, site plan control agreement for Kevin and Jenna Walsh. Again, this is an existing cottage. They're actually, they're right on Highway 17. They have a long driveway down to the river, uh, 3.26 acres in, to in total. There was an existing house and a small garage on the property. They've recently replaced the septic system, which uh, meets a setback from the waterfront. The new garage is actually set back further than the septic system, the proposed garage. It meets the requirements from the side lot lines. It's a fairly narrow lot at the bottom, at the base when you get close to the river. It does meet the side lot lines for that. And the proposed construction is going to meet the, the maximum, like it'll be below the maximum height allowance for for an accessory building. So again, it meets all the requirements and they're just asking for a site plan so they can go ahead and hopefully build this fall. 
Any questions or concerns about that one? All right. Item G, E permitting. E permitting. I've had conversations and a few webinars with a company called Cloud Permit. I've been looking at uh, the last few years, a uh, few years at, at uh, making the job of building the fish a lot easier through e permitting. It's a software program that you can access on your cell phone, on iPad, on your laptop, and on your computer. You can do all your reporting right on site when you go to do a building inspection. You can do your reporting either on your phone and it automatically downloads into the cloud. They use cloud for it. They don't, it doesn't access you our own system. So there's no danger of, of uh, sabotage or anything or, or hacking that type of thing through it. Uh, it allows you to do your, uh, say your impact reporting now takes hours to do because there's 20 some fields that you need to fill in a spreadsheet for each permit. This does it automatically. You just, when at the end of the month, you go impact, put in your dates, hit enter, and it automatically sends a report off to them. Uh, hmm. The same with Stats Canada. Now, Stats Canada only takes five minutes to do, but this way it, it's it's all recorded in the system, keeps track of everything. Uh, the same with your uh, inspections. When you do an inspection, it's recorded. Once, a, uh, let's say, the framing inspection is complete, that's locked in, so you, you cannot change, go back and change something, say, oh, I missed that, I'm not going to change it. Once that's done, you can't go back and change something to you know, cover your own backside in case you miss something that you're not aware of. And so so it, it's a secure program in that can't be tampered with once the inspections are completed. When you complete an inspection, the, the owner and the contractor can automatically be notified by email that they've passed or if there's some non-compliance issues that need to be completed first. It makes tracking a whole lot easier. There's you're not writing out reports, and if you've read my handwriting, it'll take you some time <laughs> to read it. <laughs> but at the same point, uh, this way, it's all there on the computer. Uh, there's several municipalities in the county that are, that have signed on or are in the process of signing on with it. Uh, Aaron Pryor, Greater Madawaska, Bonisher, Pembroke is looking at it, and Padawawa is in the process of looking at signing on as well. It, makes the job a lot easier, uh, saves an awful lot of time, which is something we just, reporting consumes probably 30% of my time as a building official, doing reporting for inspections and for outside agencies, whatever. Would this be good for the septic system uh, permits and stuff as well? Or yeah, they're issued through that as well. Oh, and perfect. any building permit is issued through it. Okay. And uh, all the records are kept so that they're kept in the cloud. They have three secure locations. Uh, they won't tell anybody where they are because they don't want anybody to know where they are yeah. for obvious reasons, but uh, for security. But no, septic systems, same thing. And any records would be on file. Now, what uh, I've talked to some of the other uh, municipalities in other areas that use it, what they do when the, they close the permit, then they print everything out. So there's a hard copy in the file, but it's all compiled, compiled together very nice and neat and orderly and easy to read. So it, it, it saves an awful lot of time and makes the job a lot easier. No, for sure, sounds like it. Um, Councillor Blimke. Yes. Um, th that sounds really good, Gord. What about training and uh, help resources? They have a, um, a training wizard. They have a download wizard for downloading and training wizard, and they have IT people that you can contact okay. as well. I spoke with uh, the building official yesterday at our local chapter meeting yesterday. Um, the building official from Empire, he said they're they're good at getting back. It, it it's not a it's not a quick download. You have to do it in sections to get set up on it. But he said it, it will work well once it's done. Uh, Bonisher has just started using it so he said they really don't know yet because he hasn't used it enough to uh, to see how well it works but uh, it's been very highly rated by a lot of the larger centers especially in southern ontario so there's quite a few cities uh, windsor uh, kitchener um, quite a few of them that use it and are very happy with it so is it all or nothing like do you buy like like uh, councillor hoyle asked about um 
uh, septic and that is it you can buy sections no to, no it, it, it's, it's all inclusive full package uh, it's it's a um, they set it up as five-year contracts five-year renewable contract and uh, right now it's five thousand dollars a year but it's prorated so if we signed on for the first of october it would be a quarter of that okay. you know you're only paying for that much which means this, there, there will still be manual entries to do for year end because everything from january to through september would not be on that program okay Councilor also uh, may I just oh sorry yeah that's uh, so why also make you aware that um they do tie into the county gis mapping but the municipality is required to write a, write a letter of request to the county to allow them entry into into their system. So. Councilor Bemke. So actually several of my questions have already been asked. I wanted to know if you know of other municipalities that have mm -hmm. used it and you have. Um, also the cost, you know, five thousand dollars you said. Um, so this is something you would want to do October the first or soon. Well this that's, year? that's what they're hoping because they they, they go by quarter, you yeah. the quarter. So that's and so you have that, that as a quarter, budget uh, budget dollars for that setup, Sure. That would come out of the modernization funding. Okay, perfect. I think it sounds really great, um, especially because, you know, it would really save a lot of time for you and your position. And uh, I like the fact that you would print things out and have a hard copy, because mm -hmm. that was my next question. You know, what if the internet goes down or there's some type of uh, fluke that happens that you lose all your data. So mm -hmm. that would be great to have a hard copy. So yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. It, it would also be an easier transition for whoever replaces it. Absolutely. Well. Yeah. And it's definitely within the sign of the times, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it seems to be the way a lot of uh, places are going with well, this kind of thing. Anything I've heard of some of our, our OBA meetings is that it sounds like the government is probably going to mandate this within five years at every municipality. Yeah. Might as well be ahead yeah. of the game. So, I mean, there's a lot of municipalities that are already mm -hmm. well ahead of the game. Yeah. But, uh, well, it sounds like you've certainly done your um, background and, you know, finding information yeah. about it. So, yeah, great. Mayor Reinald. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, so you go to a job site, you have your, your, your laptop or your iPhone, mm -hmm. uh, you're doing a an inspection on the framing or what have you and you find a you find a couple of deficiencies so you can you can put that into your phone or your laptop at that at that particular time yes you set up whatever, then, whatever you want as far as 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 inspections like some building officials do more than the required inspections yeah but you check off and if the, if then what happened is there'll be two red check marks those so red tagged so the framing inspection isn't complete. It doesn't stop you from going ahead and, and doing your rough in plumbing yep. or your electrical, yep. but they can't go ahead and do insulating or cover, close it in until that's, that's clear. So you can still go ahead to the next yeah. um, it's required inspection in the system, but that it'll keep coming up with a red flag saying this is not complete. So it keeps you aware of it. Mm -hmm. So can you attach a photo like you know say there's yes they're automatically you attach yeah, your photos photo to... automatically are attached to okay, that good. and everything is is attached to that permit number excellent no oh, i'm it's a nice system sounds good. like a good good technology okay any other questions huh? all right <coughs> moving thank you. thank you moving on economic development if there's anything, no correspondence, no late correspondence, nothing for a closed session. So I'll adjourn at 10.45. I'd like to call this meeting to order for the Committee of the Whole for Public Works. Any declarations of pecuniary interest? None, delegations, presentations. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to wait just a couple of minutes for Scott to come in. Sorry, I should have waited a bit longer. We have to do some cleaning. Thank you, Gord. Thanks, Gord. Thanks, Gord. <laughs>
Take your own risk. Yeah. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. Good deal. Not too bad. You want to wait for it to dry? Or... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the first thing is roads. We have our public works superintendent's report for July and August and proposed work schedule for the month of September 2021. Any questions or comments? You've got your work cut out for you, you guys, for sure. Mayor Reinwald, and then. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, thank you and your crew for doing some cleanup down at the end of Goodsman Road in the park area. I know there's a few people that are, they're asking me questions. Why are they taking those trees down? But, you know, after responding back to some of them, it was due to safety. And I also mentioned that we used to have some uh, younger people there getting gathering together in the evenings, and which caused a little bit of kerfuffle too. So it's cleaned that area out, did a nice job of the ditching. and. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to thank you and your guys for you know for doing that. Really opened it up. I took a drive down there yesterday, and before you had to kind of peek through to see what was going on, and now it's good and open, like like all the other parks. So, so good job on that, Scott. Councillor Boucher, just a question, Scott. Any uh, update on your brochure? Yeah, I'm figuring you don't have one, but I thought I'd ask. <laughs> no, I sent an email out uh, yesterday morning, actually, and I haven't heard anything back. So I don't know. They're saying by the end of October. Okay. So we can only hope. We can only hope. Yes. Yeah, we need it. Councillor Blimke. Um, I just wanted to pass on some uh, comments made from uh, some people when uh, the Recreation Committee had their ball tournament this year. It was a very quick uh you know, thing to get that going and whatever, because it was kind of last minute. And uh, a lot of people commented on how well your crew looked after getting that field ready and, you know, kept it up during the week and whatever in between games and, and uh, whatever. So a lot of people did comment on that. So I just want you to pass that on to your, to your crew and your students that worked on that. And I believe we were hitting record high temperatures yes. that whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went down to Goodspin Road uh, the other day too, and it looks. I know once once the ditching looks good, but once that cleans up a bit, it, you know, just with rain and packs it down, it's. Uh, I agree, it's nice to have it wide open. Yeah, good. Any other comments, questions? No. Uh, so the next two items are uh, more th kudos to Public Works from uh, David and Caroline Lee and Wade Mayo and Rosie Desitel. Uh, thank yous for works they've done. Uh, next is correspondence from Leonard Taylor regarding Forestry Road. He's asking to appear council. I'd like to defer this one to item uh, number 11A in our council meeting where uh, our CAO will be discussing how we go forward with our meetings, if that's okay with everybody. Okay, Mayor Reinwald. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, actually, what I'd prefer to do if uh, committee's uh, okay with it as I like to take item uh, items D and E and defer that until uh, the next uh, meeting uh, and, and item D the individual thought he would be able to attend the meeting to supply any support and I was not able to do so and I also he called me about it actually and I probably gave him the wrong information. And so I think he has an should have an opportunity to speak. Uh, in, it'll be in writing rather than uh, rather than, uh, than showing up. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bunke. I support this. I'd like to see that happen as well so that uh, Mr. Taylor does have an opportunity to put together uh, a letter to council that details his case a little bit more. Um, as Mayor Ryan Wallace said, Mr. Taylor was hoping to attend a meeting and under the COVID restrictions, it's it's harder. So therefore he can't give his, uh, his uh, description of what he feels has happened over the years, causing the flooding onto his property. So I support that uh, we defer this until next month and give Mr. Taylor some some time. Um, we do have a report, though, from our engineers, which is the next item on the agenda, um, in which they have come up with the, uh, their conclusion is that 
Laurentian Hills is not responsible for any of the flooding. So I'm prepared to accept this report um, as it is from, it, is, it was from the direction of our last committee meeting that we uh, hire an engineer to get their professional opinion. And it is also the opinion of our public work superintendent. So I have no problem with Mr. Taylor coming to the next meeting, but I would like to move that we accept this report. Councilor Pouchet. I second that because it is a report that we asked for and we got the report and he did give us a defined answer. Mayor Reinwald. I still would like to defer until next uh, till next session. At least uh, we can give this gentleman a, a chance to talk about uh, his concerns. We may not have everything in place and I certainly believe he, he deserves uh, um, a chance to uh, speak in writing. Thank you. I agree. And uh, th this is a public report. So uh, it's something that we can share with Mr. Taylor as well. And uh, he can kind of take it from there. I don't see the issue with uh, deferring this for a month. Uh, I have no problem with him um, coming or in person or in writing. Absolutely. Okay. Well, whatever is decided, right, at the next, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we will defer item D. Okay. Uh, street lights. Nothing on that street lights. Water and sewer. Everything is going well there. Waste sites. Council member update. Um, we are still um, at, I guess, our status quo where our, our Ranch and Hill staff is, is uh, they're paying all the bills from the waste sites. I know that there had been a meeting set up with both CAOs as we had um, asked for, but unfortunately there was a, a public works emergency in Deep River that day and I know it has to be uh, rescheduled. Yeah. Um, but all the um, we, we do have a date for the, the, the well from JP2G, and I believe it is in October, is it, uh, Sherry? Yeah. And that was the, the one outstanding item, Councillor Boomke. So do we have a date for the meeting with the CAOs? I don't believe it's been set yet. No, Deep River and ourselves are trying to find a common date that works for everybody. Who's all involved in the meeting? The Just two mayors and the two CAOs. Yeah. Okay. Mayor Reinwald. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, through you to, to uh, Councillor Blimke, we've had a couple of, of dates set up, and well, one of them was the, because of an emergency, and uh, uh, we just haven't been able to hit the you know, hit a timeline where the four of us can get together. Uh, actually, last night I got a uh, email from uh, Mayor Dion. And requesting again, which I have not forwarded yet uh, to yourself, Sherry. And uh, so we're trying to find a timeline, and hopefully within the next couple of weeks we can get something set up. Fair enough. I uh, I understand that definitely. Um, I'd like to uh, you know see this all come to uh, some type of resolution at some point, hopefully this year, kind of thing. You know, it's been going on for quite a while. We haven't had a board meeting. And, uh, you know, board members are kind of wondering what's going on. Thank you. Hopefully that will be uh, soon that that can be worked out, Mayor. Okay, airport. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, on uh, the 16th of September, uh, there was a, uh, uh, we had a Zoom meeting, the Pembroke Canary Airport. And uh, we went. It was we went through our re, our routine uh, meetings, our the approval of agendas, the adoption of the previous meetings, our financial reports, and uh, man, actually there was one on the uh, uh, management uh, review. And uh, in that uh, in the management review, some of the things they look at are incidents of uh, regulatory uh, noncompliance reported airside and landside uh, safety incidents. Uh, so this safety management system was set up by a individual who used to work for Air Canada. 
and he is now retired and uh, he now supports the Pemberton Area Airport through his uh, volunteers. And uh, so he set up this whole safety management system on behalf of uh, the Pemberton Area Airport. So he's been really providing us with a lot of a lot of good information. He started on this probably, I'd say at least three years ago. And at one time there was a, a safety management manual that was about that thick and he's been able to condense it down and get concurrence through the uh, uh, ministry of, uh, he basically he's taken out the components uh, that are not really required um, at the Pemberton Area Airport, you know, it's a certified airport. So that when they when they do that, when it's a certified airport, it includes things like the Toronto Airport, Ottawa. So there's a lot more uh, uh, things that they have to do. So he's been able to take it and bring it down to uh, a real, you know, reasonable size. So uh, kudos off to, to Jim for that. So currently we're sitting in our bank balance of about 197,000. Um, the reserves uh, about 275,000. There's about 100,000 in uh, project runway investments. And uh, we're, there's uh, one the municipal grant of 93,000, which we think we may have to return because it didn't follow all the guidelines of the uh, feds, you know, uh, federal guidelines. So. We're not sure about that one yet. We're trying to keep it, but we'll find out soon. Uh, one other thing I wanted to uh, bring up uh, is uh, I was at a meeting uh, last week, and at that meeting, uh, I received a uh, an email from the uh, commissioner of the uh, Pemberton Area Air Airport, where there was a 30-passenger jet that had landed and we found or found out that that 30 passenger jet was uh people had uh, re, uh left there and went to uh cnl to take a look at some uh, ventures new ventures with cnl and so uh later on in the report i'll talk to you a little bit more about about that okay thank you Councillor Bunke. Yeah, hopefully that'll bring in more, uh, you know, business from CNL to uh, use that airport, mm -hmm. you know, because it'd be definitely good for the the uh, local airport. Yeah. Sorry, I'll discuss it more. So sorry, in the mayor's report at, yeah. uh, at okay. council. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, I have nothing for other business. I have nothing for a closed session. I will adjourn at 1058. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Thank you very much, Scott. Like call to order the Committee of the Home for Community and Social Services. Uh, any declaration of pecuniary interest? None. Delegations and presentations? None. Uh, the library. Um, so we have the library minutes from June 14th and um, reports from Point Alexander and John River. Um, we had our first meeting after the summer break. Of September. It was a. Uh, oh. And I wasn't heeding your warning, eh, Tammy? So, anyway, the uh, minutes for the meeting, the library meetings and reports are attached. Uh, again, we had our first meeting after the summer break. Um, it was a good meeting. Everybody was in attendance, and uh, we uh, discussed a couple of things that had been uh, left undone from the spring. We uh, reviewed a bylaw and forth. So any comments on the minutes or the reports? Mayor Reinwald? No, thank you, Chair. I, uh, I just wanted to, uh, uh, I guess, I give my condolences to, to Mr. Wiley, yeah. who was a big user of the of the library. I used to meet him here on a regular basis and uh, he's uh, going to be very, very much missed in the in the Laurentian Hills. Absolutely. That's all I have to say. Yes. Are we still uh, actively, actively looking for a new librarian or is no. Maureen just No, right at the moment. I'm just um, asking because it's been... Maureen is uh, doing an excellent job. I know, I'm not saying she's not, no, I'm just asking. No, and I think she's enjoying it okay. and... Uh, 
personally during COVID, I think it's probably something that she's enjoying a lot more because, you know, something to do, right? And, uh, you know, I, I really, really hope she stays for a long time because she's one of the best librarians I've worked with she since I've been in council. <laughs> she's very, very good at her job. And, uh, yeah. I know. She doesn't seem to be, um, you know, uh, thinking about that right at the moment. So I think she'll be around for a while yet. Uh, I just want to comment on the reports. So uh, during COVID, our numbers had gone down quite a bit, the uh, distribution of books and whatever. And I was quite surprised, especially at the library here in Port Alexander, Chalk River was good as well, that the numbers were really up and very comparable to the 2020 and 2019, especially, which was quite surprising. So, you know, people are still, you know, coming in for books and especially because we're open uh, various days. So yeah, it was, it's very good. Nothing else to comment on there. So recreation, um, we had uh, our ball tournament uh, the Recreation Committee, uh, Charlene and uh, her committee uh, put together a last minute shorter version of the seasonal baseball. Uh, it went very, very well. They followed, um, you know, they went back and forth with Sherry on various things and they followed COVID restrictions and guidelines. Um, and it went very, very well. Mayor Reinwald was out as well. I was there. Uh, we ran the barbecue for them, and that went very, very well. Um, the kids were extremely happy. You know, it was a, it was a great day. So uh, kudos to the Recreation Committee and the municipality to get that. Do you have any comments about that, Mayor Reinwald? Uh, yeah, basically in the... Uh First of all, yes, it was an extremely great, uh, it, was, it was a really good turnout considering the time length they had. It was about what started uh, around 11 and ended around five, five or so, five yeah. or five ish. Uh, the games were short and sweet and uh, the kids just had a riot out there. Uh, we had an assembly line going uh, in the, in the food area so that nobody was, uh, you know, was, um, bothering with, with the others we had a hot dog person we had a bun person we had a you know a condiment person so and you know we had, a, we had quite an assembly line going so that that worked out quite well uh councillor blimke and i were also able or provided the or handed out the uh little trophies little memento trophies and uh you know for the children and for the final game we uh the um, they all received ribbons so it was very, very nice to see uh, the smiles on the children's faces when uh, when they picked up these little trophies. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, I just want to um, bring to attention, I'm not sure if everybody has read the newsletter or whatever, but the Legion is having their steak dinner and dance this coming Saturday. And I think today's the final day to order their steak if they want it. Um, Lions Club has been busy as well. They've started their coffee club up again, 8 till 10.30, I believe, every day. Um, they have a breakfast option there as well. And uh, we actually get people from Deep River coming down there. Uh, again, uh, the, the Legion and the Lions Club Hall are very good at following their COVID restrictions and whatever. Uh, there was a memorial pancake breakfast for Jim Bellage a week or so ago. It was a good turnout to that. October 1st, they're having a steak dinner as well. Um, I'm not sure if anybody's involved in that, you know, for barbecuing. I know you were a couple of years ago, John, on the barbecue. And then in November, they're having a craft fair. So uh, just to pass the word around to support these businesses in our municipality. Any comments on recreation or questions? Uh, nothing for the Resource Centre Nursery School, nothing other business. Nothing for closed session. And if I can see that, I think it says 11.05, we will adjourn. Okay, I'd like to call the order committee of the whole for finance and personnel. Uh, declaration of pecuniary interests, being none. Uh, delegations and presentations, none. Administration, none. Financial, 
comparison to budget. Anybody have any questions on that, on the budget? Considering our, you know, with the restrictions that we have in place, and I think you've all, we, uh, Scott even alluded to uh, receiving, a, you know, purchases that are having real difficulty in receiving. I think we're pretty well, uh, I think we're surely underspending, but the, I think the big difficulty of, of yeah. procuring products and services is making it difficult to stay in line with the expected. Anything else? Uh, staff training, personal issues, be none, other business, none, uh, closed session, none, and adjournment at 11.06. Thank you. And Sean, can we uh, take, a, we're going to take a 10 minute uh, break.
Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to call to order a regular meeting of uh, council this uh, Wednesday, 22nd of September at 11.19 a.m. Uh, declaration of pecuniary interests. Seeing none. Delegations and presentations, there are none today. And uh, next item is adoption of minutes. So moved by Ann Giardini, seconded by John Hoyle, be it hereby resolved the minutes of the regular meeting of council 21st of July, 2021, be adopted as circulated. Any discussions? All in favor? And carried. Next item moved by Ann, or John Hoyle, seconded by Ann Giardini, be it hereby resolved the minutes of the special meeting of council of 2nd September 2021 be adopted as circulated. Discussions? All in favor? And carried. Standing committee reports, moved by Bruce Boucher, seconded by Brenda Blimke, be it hereby resolved the minutes of the meeting of the Committee of the Whole for the Protection of Persons and Property of July 21st, 2021 be adopted as circulated. Discussions? All in favor? And carried. Moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Bruce Boucher, be it hereby resolved the minutes of the meeting of the Committee of the Whole for planning of 21st of July 2021 be adopted as circulated. Discussions? All in favor? And carried. Uh, next item, moved by Ann Giardini, seconded by Brenda Blimke, be it hereby resolved the minutes of the meeting of the Committee of the Whole for Public Works of 21st of July 2021 be adopted as circulated. Any discussions? All in favor? And carried. Moved by Brenda Blimke, seconded by Ann Giardini, be it hereby resolved the minutes of the meeting of the Committee of the Whole for Community and social services of 21st of July, 2021, be adopted as circulated. Any discussions on that? All in favor? And carried. Moved by Ann Giardini, seconded by John Hoyle, be hereby resolved the minutes of the meeting of the Committee of the Whole for Finance and Personnel of 21st of July, 2021, be adopted as circulated. Any discussions? All in favor? And carried. Uh, next item is business arising out of previous minutes. Be none. Other reports? None. Uh, mayor's update. You'll just have to give me a second here. Okay, so on September the 1st, uh, the CAO and I had a, and our uh, CBO, um, in an interview for a position of this uh, new CBO position. And on September 2nd, we had our uh, special meeting of council. September 9th, uh, at a mayor's meeting with the Deep River District Hospital. September 11th, uh, attended the, uh, as Councillor Blimke pointed out, recreation, uh, attended the uh, minor ball tournament. And uh, we did handed out hot dogs, trophies, and ribbons for, for the children. Great, it was very successful for the time frame that they had to, uh, to put it all together. September 14th, uh, uh, with the County Development Property Committee meeting, uh, one of the big highlights of that, for especially for Laurentian Hills, is the, uh, it's the Algonquin Trail. Uh, is hopefully this year it's going to be continued through from Petawawa through the Chalk River and continuing on out as far as the Wiley Road uh, near uh, near the Holds Farm. So that's going to uh, it's going to get us out there a little further, and uh, hopefully it'll start bringing in more uh, business for the people you know in the local area. Uh, next item uh, was on the 15th, the Community Services Committee meeting. On September the 6th, I attended uh, a meeting at, at with ACL, CNL, with the uh, management team and the mayors from Laurentian Hills, Deep River, Petawawa, and Pembroke. 
And with that, they provided us uh, a briefing package, which uh, if you wish to have a copy, I'll, I'll, I can give it to Sherry and, and she can pass it on. But uh, in that package, it, uh, it sort of gave the history of, uh, of CNL from uh, 1944, uh, chosen for the site of the natural, uh, National Council of Canada's new uh, nuclear uh, research campus and carries on through to present sort of, sort of a balloon and arrow uh, program, which I thought was, was quite interesting. And uh, so we met with uh, uh, Joseph uh, McBrady. He's the president and chief executive officer of the Canadian Nuclear Laboratories. And also, uh, we also met with Fred uh, DeMarker. Uh, he is the uh, president and CEO of AECL. Uh, and uh, he's a new member of the group and he uh, spent a lot of time in, in the hydro uh, uh, down at the Bruce site and uh, worked on, on heavy water. And he's very, very keen on the small modular reactors. So there was uh, quite a consortium of folks there. Another gentleman by the name of Lou I'm going to see if I can pronounce this right, Riccoboni. He's a vice president of uh, corporate affairs and business development. And uh, in that, what he was hoping uh, he'd like to do is to try to get the local businesses more involved with what's going on at CNL. So a couple of things that they talked about was possibly having a, uh, maybe a, a a grouping of people to say at the uh, uh, at the Chalk River Area Lions Club Hall, where they could have a bit of a venue there with uh, uh, local businesses to see if they are at all interested in uh, working at CNL, and possibly these smaller businesses could join together and work on some of the larger projects, which I thought was a was a pretty good idea. Rather than, I mean, the large jobs, the, the new builds, and things like that. They require certainly require a lot of the uh, outside expertise, but by being able to amalgamate some of the smaller businesses together, they might be able to, you know, help uh, help the local businesses too. So, which I thought was was very very uh, was very beneficial. Uh, one one of the other items that they talked about, uh, as I mentioned, there was a that thirty seater. Uh, jet that landed at the uh, Pembrokean area airport. One of the things that they're looking at now is uh, this is targeted alpha therapy, TAT, actinium-225, a new weapon in the fight of, uh, against cancer. So there's some folks from uh, overseas that are very, very interested in CNL. Uh, with uh, apparently CNL has uh, this actinium-225 available and the half-life is about 10 days so it goes in the system it attacks the cells that it wants to attack and within 10 days the half-life drops you know drop you know drops a half in 10 days so these folks from out of town are very very interested and uh, so there it's a it's a definitely uh, a uh, Another good thing for uh, uh, CNL and also and might also help out with the support of the Pembroke Airport. So, anybody, if you want a copy of this, you're more than welcome uh, to have that. And on the <clears throat> tomorrow, I'll be having a meeting with the uh, uh, departmental. Uh, uh, department property meet, uh, special meet, committee meeting tomorrow morning and then on the 29th uh, will be county council and that's the end of my report any questions Councilor no question but uh, thanks for the update from CNL ACL you know the information um, I think it's really important that they're reaching out to local businesses in the area so that's very good news and they're acknowledging that yeah. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So on September 9th, I met with the Renfrew County District Health Unit again with uh, Dr. Cushman and all the area, either their mayors and CAOs. 
um, the message there is always, you know, please get vaccinated. The lowest group um, is the age 20 to 45 year olds. They still have the lowest vaccination rate. Um, as of today, uh, to enter a lot of buildings and, and uh, businesses, you need your to show proof of uh, your vaccination. Uh, there is another meeting tomorrow um, where I believe there may be more information on policies that uh, municipalities are being asked to put forward. I know that the CAOs are having a lot of discussions on this, uh, so we may know a little bit more tomorrow about that. Uh, that's it. So if you have anything you want me to ask tomorrow, please send it to me. Thank you very much, Anne. Okay, moving on to bylaws. Moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Bruce Boucher. Be it hereby resolved that bylaw number 2121 be in a bylaw to amend bylaw number 1012, the town's uh, comprehensive zoning bylaw, um, hard steep. You now be read a first, second, third time, and passed. Any discussions? All in favor? Then carry. Uh, moved by John Hoyle, second by Bruce Boucher, be hereby resolved that bylaw number 2221 being a bylaw to authorize a site plan control agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Laurentian Hills and 782338 Ontario Limited, Robert Watts, Stephen Watts, uh, Sylvania Watts, and Christina Fry do now be read a first, second, third time, and passed. All in favor? And carried. Next item moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Bruce Boucher, be it hereby resolved that bylaw number 2321 being a bylaw to authorize a site plan control agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Laurentian Hills and Barbara Anderson do now be read a first, second, third time, and then passed. Any discussions? All in favor? And carried. Next item moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Bruce Boucher, be it hereby resolved that bylaw number 2421 being a bylaw to authorize a site plan control agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Laurentian Hills and Cameron McGregor and Ruth Elif. Elif, I think is how it's pronounced, do now be read a first, second, a third time, and passed. Any discussions? All in favor? And carried. Next item moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Bruce Boucher, be it hereby resolved that bylaw number 2521 being a bylaw to authorize a site uh, plan control agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Laurentian Hills and Jeffrey Stewart and Colleen Stewart do now be read a first, second, third time and pass. The discussions, all in favor and carried. Uh, next item moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Bruce Boucher, be it hereby resolved that bylaw number 2621 being a bylaw to authorize a site plan control agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Laurentian Hills and uh, Kevin and Jenna Walsh uh, do now be read first, second, third time, and passed. Any discussions? All in favor? And carried. Next item, moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Bruce Boucher, be it hereby resolved that bylaw number 2721 being a bylaw to enter into a service agreement with Evolta Software Inc. E uh, permitting do now be read a first, second, third time, and pass. Any discussions on that? All in favor? And carried. Sounds like a good system. Next item, uh, moved by John Hoyle, seconded by Bruce Boucher, be it hereby resolved that bylaw number 2821 being a bylaw to enter into a service agreement with uh, PSD Citywide Inc. Uh, do now be read a first, second, third time and pass. Discussions on that, your asset management. Thank you. All in favor? And carry. Next item, approval of accounts. Resolution to accept uh, unaudited statements. Moved by Ann Giardini, seconded by Bruce Boucher, be it hereby resolved that this council does acknowledge receipt 
of the unaudited statements of revenues and expenses as compared to budget as of the 1st of September 2021. Discussions? All in favor? And carried. Uh, next item be petitions, be none. Correspondence. Moved by Ann Giardini, seconded by John Hoyle, be hereby resolved that the resolution from the municipality of Chatham Kent re support motion M84 anti hate, hate crimes and incidents and private members bills C313 banning symbols of hate act be filed or endorsed. Discussions. Yeah. I would still like to endorse this. Okay. Anybody else have any? All wish to endorse? Yep. Carrie. Okay, thank you. Next item moved by Brandon Blemke, seconded by Ann Giardini. Be hereby resolved that the resolutions from the municipality of Trent Lake regarding OHIP eye care service be filed or endorsed. John. I think we should endorse this as well. Anyone else have any comments? Mm -hmm. In agreement? Okay, uh, so all in favor of endorsing. Carried. Next item, moved by Bruce Boucher, seconded by Brenda Blimke, be it hereby resolved that the resolution from the City of Stratford petitioning the provincial government to take steps to replace gas-powered electrical generation with non-carbon sustainable alternatives be filed or endorsed. Brenda. I'm willing to endorse this. I think climate change is a huge factor and we're behind and like we need to support anything that gets us to our targets. Anybody else have any comments? I agree. All in favor of endorsing? And, and carried. Uh, just as a, a comment, when I was at the uh, meeting with CNL, they too had concerns about the uh, about the the, the uh, greenhouse or with the uh, gas powered electric generation, and uh, that's one of the biggest factors right now. Uh, so they're really trying to help promote uh, nuclear again, and hopefully that people will, you know, with with their uh, with some of the things that they're planning and doing, that people will help or will start to understand that you know the importance of nuclear power and and uh, the safety of it. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that. So moved by, next item moved by Brenda Blipke, seconded by Andrew Dini, be hereby resolved that the resolution from the city of Woodstock regarding action of affordable housing, homelessness, and actions be filed or endorsed. Discussions, Brenda? I'd like to endorse this. Anyone else? I'd like to endorse it as well. Okay, all in favor of endorsing? Carrie. Mm -hmm. Next item moved by Bruce Boucher, seconded by Brenda Blimke, be it hereby resolved that the resolution from the town of Plimpton, Wyoming, regarding the rise, rising costs of building materials be filed or endorsed. Discussions? Brenda? I'd like to endorse this. We all know that building materials have gone up substantially in the last year, and uh, it's a bit of a crisis for people, so. Yeah. Everybody so in favor everything. of endorsing? Yeah. Let's show of hands, please. I'll carry them. It's starting. That's starting. Yeah. Well, we better hope so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next item uh, resolution re truthing reconciliation. So moved by Bruce Boucher, seconded by Brenda Blimke. Whereas the Truth and Reconciliation Commission released its final report on June 2nd, 2015, which included 94 calls to action to uh, redress the, the legacy of residential schools and advance the process of uh, Canadian reconciliation. And whereas the recent uh, discoveries of remains and unmarked graves across Canada have led to 
increased calls for all levels of government to address the recommendations in the uh, TRC's calls to action. And whereas all Canadians and all orders of government have a role to play in reconciliation. Whereas recommendations of number 80 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission call upon the federal government in collaboration with uh, Aboriginal peoples to establish as a statutory holiday, a national day for truth and reconciliation to ensure that public commemoration of the history and legacy of residential schools remains a vital component of the reconciliation process. Whereas the federal government has announced September 30th, 2021, as the first National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, National Orange Shirt Day, and a statutory holiday. Now I hereby be resolved that the County of the Town of Laurentian Hills does hereby commit to recognizing September 30th, 2021, as a National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, National Orange Shirt Day by sharing the stories of residential schools, survivors, their families, and communities. Any discussions around that? I'd like to speak. Anne? Yeah. I'd like to endorse this. Okay. Sure. I'd like to endorse this as well. Uh, this is uh, not an endorsement. This is a resolution to be I'm going to vote on uh, moving Supporting forward with it, it or okay. not. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Jerry, I just wanted to ask you a question about this. Uh, let, well, let's move on first. All in favor? Opposed? And it's carried. So on the uh, on, on the date uh, on September 30th, are, are we going to be doing anything? Uh, I was thinking with regards to uh, uh, having our flags at half mask or a separate flag for that particular day, or, or do you know, has anybody uh, or any other municipalities or uh, planning on doing something like that? I, I, I don't know. I'm not aware of what other municipalities are doing other than um, recognizing the day. Okay. Okay, thank you. If Council wishes, we can lower our flags. I would like to see that. Yeah. Anybody okay with that? Yeah, in recognition. So, okay, thank you. So what we uh, what we did do a month or so ago is we had the the flags lowered to half mass for a certain period of time, and that was during the first uh, uh, time when we found out about you know the the grave sites in the uh, west. So, anyways, uh, yeah, that might be a good a good idea. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is uh, information items. Uh, moved by Ann Giardini, seconded by Brenda Blimke. Be it hereby resolved that all items of correspondence be filed. Any discussions on items? All in favor? And carried. Unfinished business, be none. New business, none. Yes, there is one. Next meeting, uh, CAO. So staff, we're looking for some direction from council on our next meetings. Um, we've been talking uh, to the medical officer of health and he has certainly promoted that virtual meetings is during the Delta variant is where they are recommending that meetings go. I'm not sure what council wants to do. Do we want to continue meeting in person? Do we want to go to virtual meetings? Um, and how do we accommodate the public? We're able to do our meetings for uh, statutory public meetings. Um, so we're just looking for some direction. Do we go back to, if we're going virtual, do we go back to committee and council meetings? Do we continue to do once a month? We're just looking to see where we're moving forward. Thank you. Does anybody have any comments or John? I think we should be uh, following our, uh, definitely our uh, doctor uh, for the county, um, Dr. Cushman's advice and direction. Um, if we don't do it, what kind of an example are we setting with the rest of the public? So 
I feel that we should be going back to virtual meetings until he sees fit that we can meet again. That's my opinion anyway. Um, I agree we should be following with the county. Um, yes, and the count not the county with the, with the uh, health unit medical. and the county is as well. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have any comments on that? I'm not sure about, you know, how much of a Delta variant issue we have right now in the municipality or in the county. Is that information known or is it just in anticipation of the Delta variant being a problem? Do we know that? So I, be okay. I believe that every case in, in Renfrew County has been attributed to the Delta variant is at that least right? in the last yeah. year, I believe. Yeah, yes. Um, and there have been numbers, I believe yesterday, there were two new cases in Renfrew County. It just takes yes. one person to, to make it another big problem. But yes, it's absolutely here. Well, initially when I read this and I, I kind of knew we were heading with uh, this particular agenda item, I was like, no, definitely not. You know, I uh, want to continue with our meetings. We're a small group, but, you know, as John has put, you know, we, uh, we would be negligent, I think, in not setting an example for the rest of our municipality in not following the county's advice on this. You know, in the event that we didn't follow it and, uh, you know, something major happened, I think we would, you know, look back on it in hindsight and regret so I support this. Sherry, you had a comment? I believe we are one of two municipalities that have been holding in-person meetings. The rest have been virtual. Bruce? So I support it, but my only problem is we have one, two, three people that have really bad internet. And sometimes it's hard to get on and stay on the virtual meeting. Lots of times I'll be on a virtual meeting and all of a sudden it goes away. So three of us would have to almost come here every time anyway. So that's my only problem. Wish we had better internet. Is there a solution for that, Jerry? Yeah, for five years. <laughs> Move closer to. No, it's okay. <laughs> like, is it possible for uh, you know, with the fire department uh, offices, you know, like I know our fire department in Chalk River, can somebody go there and to hack in on their internet? Could you come here and use the fire department here? Yeah, but if you get better reception here, why not? It's just a thought so well, that. Well, if you go here, well, the building here, I think you can't have too many people in here. That's the uh, whole idea is not to have a lot of people in this particular room. So it's just a thought so that people are not being kicked off and, and uh, you know, can't talk or whatever. So as it stands right now, are we we're meeting all of the protocols yes, within are. the you know within the Rutherford County District Health Unit protocol, correct? We're, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We as we as staff are doing what we're supposed to be doing for our protocols. And we in council chambers here are also doing the same, correct? Yes. No, I don't know. I, I'm asked. That's why. I'm asking. So I believe, I don't know at what point we have to prove that we've been vaccinated. Now that may be the next thing. But until that time comes, I don't think we should take that into factor. I mean, I, well, I believe county, county has got this separation, do they not? Yeah, I but there's a lot more people at county. Yeah. There's what, so 25, 30 people at county? County Council put these precautions into place, but they've gone back to virtual meetings based on Chief Nolan's recommendations. As per, you're right. So I, I believe that as per the Medical Officer of Health of health recommendation, I think we should be following that. So we'll follow the virtual, go back to virtual. Everybody okay with that? Can I just yes. make one uh, statement, and I am supportive of that, uh, but I, I don't want to go back to just special meetings. I think we still need to cover everything that's on our agendas that are is coming in and uh you know still i mean oh it's brutal doing zoom and sometimes it's hard to get our own opinions in or comments or whatever but i think we need to continue with business as usual 
even though it's on Zoom. Um, you know, during the first six or seven months of COVID, we were doing only special meetings. And, you know, the lack of information going out to council, you know, and I understand the times, it was a hard time, but it, uh, we need to keep business going as usual. Okay. So that is what we're asking. Are we going back to Zoom? Are we going to once a month meetings? Are we splitting them back out? That's the direction we're looking for. I'll just make another comment sure. on that. So um, I think it, it, for me, like I found this particular uh, combination of the two, three meetings this morning is a lot. There's a lot on this particular agenda to read and uh, follow up on and, uh, you know, wrap your mind around for one meeting. And I'm, that's my thoughts. So if it's warranted, if there's enough on your agendas, I, th I would like to see the meeting split out once again. I mean, uh, it'd be up to the mayor and Sherry to have that discussion at the beginning of the month. And if your committee meeting only has one or two items on, on that, well, then it's only going to be 15, 20 minutes. Well, then, yes, we combine it for that month. But if we ever have an agenda like this again, I would like to see it split up into two meetings. John? Um, possibly this meeting was a little longer because of not having one last month. Um, like, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm kind of asking, uh, they're not normally this small. So the council agenda would have been the same. And because those site plan control agreements, um, there was uh, several of them. And under legislation, we needed to hold that public meeting. So I'm just wondering, uh, if we do have some large packages, is there there's nothing preventing our you know within our bylaws to break them up to have a, our committee meetings at the regular time and the council at you know at the third week of the on the wednesday if the packages are small we'll combine them and uh, include them in with the uh, with the council meetings does that sound fair to everybody Perfect. and it'll be done virtually is that what everybody yeah. is in favor of okay so i think that's for what the next three months they're talking about two months well, we'll see about that. Yes, but for now it's September, October, and we revisit. We will continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I just ask one other question? And then, uh, so for people uh, that want to make a presentation to council, I know we're even in person, we're not allowing anybody into uh, the chambers to make those presentations. Can the residents? uh make arrangements to come in on zoom for their presentations yes that's the direction we're seeking today okay yeah so i think that's important because yeah. our uh, contact with our residents has been very limited and it's no fault of uh, anybody's other than covid but uh, i think there's a lot of things going on in the municipality that a lot of people would still like to address council mm -hmm. so i think it's important we allow or we try and make every effort to make that possible for them through Zoom. Uh, yep, good, good point, Brenda. The, uh, the other thing, uh, uh, you know, what ties into that, that you know, we're, we're assuming that everybody has a computer or a laptop or, or what have you. Some people are, uh, are, are not computer literate. Some people don't have access to, uh, uh, you know, heading west of here, there's, there's a number of people that uh, just don't have access, proper access. So those ones are going to be a little more difficult. They're going to have to put something in, in writing, uh, I would think, if they can't do it uh, unless they go to someone else's home and uh, someone show, you know, shows them how to get online and whatnot, but that could start to be a bit difficult too. We always take written submissions. So maybe that's what we do then. For those who do not have the uh, capabilities, uh, that they don't have the the experience or the uh, or or the, uh, the material to do it with, but they will do it uh, you know in written, and everyone else will be virtual. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. I have... All right. Sorry, Anne. Okay, I, I agree with that. But what about our, say like Kevin mentioned that they've gone back to in person training? Does this will this also apply to any subcommittee we have? or any other department meetings? Well, firefighters are emergency services and they have been training outside and aware of distancing. Okay. Okay. 
And I just want to say that the library board has never gone in person. They're still uh, virtual on Zoom. Okay. Anything else? So, do you, is there any other questions that you had, Cherry, or is you, we, are they all answered? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, next item. Uh, closed session. Uh, yes, we have a closed session today. So it's moved by Andrew Dini, seconded by John Hoyle. Be here by, by resolve, the next portion of the meeting be closed to the public pursuant to Section 239 of the Admissible Act, C25SO2001, as amended as, as the subject matter being considered is item B, personal matters about identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. Uh, can I uh, have a vote, please? Move into close. And carry.
And thank you very much, everybody. And we're back into our open meeting. I'd like to rise and report uh, the meeting being closed to the public pursuant to uh, uh, amendment of the subject matter being considered as the personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. The next item is motions and notice the motions. None. Uh, confirmatory bylaw moved by Andrew seconded by Brenda Blimke. Be it hereby resolved that bylaw number 2921 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Town of Laurentian Hills meeting of, of Council held on September 22nd do now be read first, second, third time, and pass. Any discussions? All in favor? And carry. And our next what item is adjournment. Moved by Ann Giardini, seconded by Brenda Blimke. Be it hereby resolved that this meeting of the Council of the Town of Laurentian Hills do now adjourn at 1222 p.m. All in favor? And carried. Who put their hand up quickest? <laughs>